This picture was taken at 1.41 p.m. April 15, 2008. The view is from Torreon, a small land grant town in the central section of New Mexico, Torrance County to be exact. At 3.09 p.m. I shot this picture. Fire watch. The Trigo fire in the Manzano Mountains has exploded. 5.41 p.m. April 30th, 2008. I shot this picture. This neighbor wanted his daughter to see him with smoke and fire in the background. 30 minutes later, he was completely burned down. Having been a firefighter myself, I warned the neighbor that if the fire starts coming toward this tree, he had better evacuate immediately. This is the same tree, June 15, 2013. This is our longtime president, Carmen Ellers. She and Bill, they lost everything as well. Along with losing homes and cabins in our subdivision, we also lost our sense of security because we lost over a mile of fence. The owner of these cattle takes full advantage of a loophole in the uh, livestock law in New Mexico. And he has basically made our subdivision a part of his cattle operation. And he taunted me by saying that I would never be able to fence him out because I would have to do it alone. And he knows we have over a mile of fencing to be done. And he knew that there were no members to help me and it would cost too much to hire a contractor. This is just one of several uh, death sites like this. This rancher lets his cows run free because this is a fence them out state. This is an open range state, New Mexico. So the rancher is not required to fence his cattle in. You have to fence them out if you don't want them on your property. And since the fire, we've had at least four of his cows to die inside this subdivision. Okay, let's do it. Here? Yeah. Okay. In the back. Oh, crap. <laughs> There you go. All right. Okay. I'll do the first one for you. Okay. See what y'all can do. Can you guys help me? Go. 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 Hey, introduce yourself. Look in the camera there. Darren? My name Darren. is Darian. Right. And I'm William. Hello. <laughs> All right. And I'm Bobby Lee.
Darian is the grandson of Carmen Eller. He's our past president, of course, for many years. And William is his best friend. These two boys were very helpful on that day. Uh, I had, you know, Carmen and uh, Lucy's permission to uh, let the boys help me. But they were very helpful, and I really appreciated it. Hanging in there? Yeah. This metal pole on the corner, this is uh, Ben Anaya's property. And this is where the uh, Torreon cabin murders took place. This is the Anaya cabin um, before the um, fire, but after the bodies, of course, were discovered. This is an article I found on the internet, and uh, it talks about on April 14th, 1996, that Ben Anaya Sr. found his, uh, found four badly decomposed bodies, in essence. And one of them, of course, turned out to be his son, Ben Anaya Jr., his girlfriend, and the two boys. This image is the one that we find to be the most striking. Um, this is actually the bed area where the uh, mother was murdered and from my understanding the boys climbed in bed with their deceased mother and eventually died of uh, starvation and dehydration. Mr. Anaya has never returned to uh, visit this property but it's a very beautiful property. Um, it survived the fire, not the cabin, but the property did. Now what gives me the right to cross these properties is that Sherwood Forest is a legal subdivision and the fence is our legal boundary separating us from the private land that's over behind us. Uh, there's about five properties that's adjacent to uh, uh, this east fence line. They share this border with us. So because we are a legally platted subdivision, um, we have easement rights to fence lines, roads, power lines. Here's something that I noticed. Now the woodcutter that I contracted with, uh, when I saw him yesterday, he claimed that he was hurting and he was just so tired that he didn't even show up. Uh, I worked out here for about three and a half hours today. And this is uh, May uh, 14th. 2013 I worked out here this morning for about three and a half hours he never showed up but I noticed that he came he done crossed the fence line and cut out wood on that side some oak and all that and uh, he's gone I see his tracks where he done backed across the road I mean he backed right in here and stuff and uh, but yet he didn't show up to work to finish off his job he got some more work to do down there this is uh, Thursday, May 16th, 2013. And this, of course, is our northeast corner on the east fence line. And by the way, this fence line starts here and it goes 2,070 feet to our southeast corner. What I'm doing today is I'm clearing down this section of fence line, which goes out to the road. It comes out by the cattle guard where we come into Shearwood Forest. And that's 500 feet in that direction. Now keep in mind, I sent out 150 letters last year 
and I asked for volunteers to help work on this fence line and no one volunteered. The only person that expressed concern was an 80 year old woman. Bless her heart. I cut this wire long so that I have something to splice onto when we put the new corner in or when I put the new corner in. I don't know why I keep saying we. There ain't no we in this one. Because the pole was already in this hole, it's making it a little bit easier to dig out. But anyway, I gotta set another corner post in here. This is a this is a major crossing area for uh, cattle, but the woodcutters have also uh, exploited this fallen fence and have crossed over and cut all in that property that's adjacent to us. So these fences are really the boundaries that protect us on this side from trespass on that side and vice versa. So it's very important. And this represents the final real hard push to make it up to the top of the mountain. I'm digging out to put bracing. Pour water in the hole to uh, soften it up. A veteran starting a business, a bustling city street, a citizen shouting her concerns for the president. The quiet determination that strength of character and bond of fellowship, that reputation of fear, that is both our sword and our shield. Faded from the world matter, alongside the brutal despots and deranged madmen and ruthless demagogues who litter history, the flag of the United States will still wave from small town cemeteries to national monuments to distant outposts of love, and that flag will still stand for freedom. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. May God bless the United States of America. President Obama at the National Defense University in Washington, D.C. You're listening to live coverage from NPR News. This is KUN, the KUN for the new undertaking Saturday. KRRT, 94.9 in Sacramento's. KRRE, 91.9 Las Vegas. KRAR, 91.9 Española. And KBOM, 88.7 Socorro. With translators at K220EM, Naizi, K216CT, Eagle Nest, and K216CU, Cuba. And on the web at KUNM.org. I'm Rita Daniels. The time is 1 o'clock, and this is all that jazz. Okay. This is the last section. Got to clear out this section. And then I'll be making my way up to the top. Some woodcutter or two cut this road in here but at least I was able to get to the fence line so I'm um, ow ouch that hurt my steering wheel hit a stump nearly broke my wrist ah. Just give you a little feel for what it's like bouncing around in this, this kind of territory. This road right here presented the greatest risk to anyone. There's huge trees on this road and through a lot of effort I managed to get these guys to uh, get their courage up and dropped these very large trees and they did that in trade for firewood but 
I'm slowly making my way down Lancelot, and it's a very long road and a very dangerous road because everything has to come up this road. The elders live up here, uh, propane trucks, uh, emergency vehicles, the utility company, telephone company. So I had to make a lot of effort to make sure this road had safe passage. And there's a couple of trees that still threaten the road, but for the most part, uh, we've gotten rid of most of the real threat. This large tree still presents a threat to uh, this road. It's leaning right in the direction of the road. This wire, all of this, it's already tightened. And I gotta come in here and finish all this out, get rid of all the, the bracing and stuff. But uh, I can say it's secure 500 feet that way, and it's secure 500 feet that way. And after today, I will have another 500 feet done. This brace is 468 feet from the uh, northeast corner. This is May 28th, 2013. And I've already showed you the corner. And I've already pulled the four strands of wire to this point. So behind me, all the way to the cattle guard is secure. So that's 1,000 feet of secure fence. When I spoke earlier, I misquoted the date. The day is actually the 29th. Wednesday the 29th of May, 2013. And what I'm doing now is I'm about to stretch the top wire You saw me down below, and what I was doing, I've already attached all the wire. Okay, I already walked down, because I can't drive that section. It's all uphill and it's rocky. So I have to walk uh, this 500 foot section. So I've already walked down to that 468 foot brace, and the wire does need more tensioning. So, at this point, this represents 2,100 feet of fence that has been pretty much restored. Now, I still have to go down and install these things. And this is what helps make the fence more stable. These are called fence stays, and these are 88 cents a piece at Home Depot. And it takes hundreds of these things. You just wind it down. Bada boom. Try to make it straight. But anyway, and got one over here. Normally you would only have one, but these T posts are spaced so wide apart that uh, it's going to take two in between every T post. Looking good. <laughs> Both the truck and me are taking a beating on this job. <laughs> uh.
this is where the job really gets hard. Um, this, from here all the way up to the top, I have to walk. And I'm going to have to take all of this material up that hill. There's a clearing up there where there was a brace. And I'm getting ready to replace the burnt brace with a new brace. And so I have to hoof it up the hill. This is why I buy the 60 pound bags. They're a little bit easier to handle. Um, anyway, this is Saturday, June 1st. I have to pull some wire. It's overcast today, actually very pleasant. The wire in this section is uh, very corroded, so I'm having to replace about 100 feet of wire, two strands. Trust me, pulling wire up a hill is not easy. Whew. Not easy at all. Oh. I gotta pull one more up to this brace. One more. June 7th, 2013. This is another death site. And this one happens to be in someone's backyard. I also finally made the top. There's my flag. Four times per pole. Four times. This is brace number seven. And at this point, I'm about 300 feet from the southeast corner. For those of us who grew up on westerns, well, this is how the west was really won. The barbed wire fence. The T-post like this, even though it's bent, I'll try to straighten it out. And, of course, you have to remove all the Separate the wire from the post first. Like I say, we'll try to straighten this post out, but it's pretty loose. So, I'll see. This is June 14th, 2013. In the background, there is Capilla Peak. These are the Manzano Mountains. Uh, in central New Mexico, Torrance County, New Mexico. And this represents one mile of fence from the cattle guard to this point where we join up with the forest, national forest. Uh, that's actually one mile. And four strands equals 20,000 feet of wire that I have pulled, uh, retightened, uh, separated from the T-pose, retighten, and then 
attach back to the T-post. This represents the last spot. I agreed to leave this spot open because the cattle owner, his ranch is one mile to the south of this fence line. Just one mile south. I was hoping this wouldn't happen. But I finally got a flat. So I pulled it down here in the shade so I can fix it. Ran over something real sharp and punched the tire. I consider this a nice omen. We're getting a little shower. Um, nothing like a flat tire, I guess, to uh, bring in a shower. On Saturday, June 15th, by chance, I ran into the cattle owner and we stopped right here under this tree and we talked for about 45 minutes because we have no animosity against each other. It's all about the law for both of us. Uh, he congratulated me on my accomplishment because he thought it would never be done. This is uh, June 19th, and it's overcast. It's a very nice, uh, comfortable day. This is the damage that the cattle did to my fountain. Uh, I fenced the property in to keep them from getting to the fountain, but I forgot to close the gate one night, and they got in, and they emptied the fountain of course but they also stepped into the fountain and destroyed my pump so I asked the rancher to buy me a new pump and he told me I needed to remember to close my gate so yesterday I went out and bought a new pump I've already put it down in the fountain and I'm getting ready to fill the fountain and here in a while I'll have the water running again and I don't have to worry about forgetting to close my gate. That's a souvenir. If any of his cows are fenced in, I'll find out about it now.